Just to hit me because she missed me with the previous one. That was rude. You interrupted my introduction. I don't like you. That was perfect timing. I'm Johara and I've disowned Alyssa. Who wants her? <laughs> Welcome to my channel, to the witchy reader. Uh, that's my new introduction I'm going to do every time. Until somebody takes her. <laughs> what? I'm kidding! Why? Why? You're such a drama queen. Moving on to this video, if she will stop being so Alyssa y. You just gestured to old me. Exactly. <laughs> she flipped me off. You want to come join the video? No. Rude. You're already kind of in the video. At least your voice is. And my pairing skills are <laughs> Still rude. So I'm going to do best. So these are just kind of my favorite characters, friendships, couples, and siblings that were in the books I read. And I will be doing some rereads because these will be including my favorite characters of all time or favorite couples of all time, friendships, siblings, whatever. Um, I'm gonna start with characters. Actually, I'll start with siblings because I don't have very many of those on here. Um, I clicked the wrong note. Okay, where are they? I lost it, here it is. Okay, best siblings of 2021. So I'll start with the ones, the siblings of books I've already read before 2021, where it was just a reread. So, a uh, Kalik and Takik, um, at the beginning, they were, I love their relationship. Um, you don't see Takik at all in the second book. You see, he's only in, okay, what books are you in? Is he in? He's in first one, third one, and there's one more in the second arc he's in. Maybe two. I can't remember if he's in the last book. But I know he's in one more where they get reunited for a moment before they separate again. Um, but uh, he was... After the separation, he thought Kalik had died with their mother. So he kind of turned into not the best person. So best bear, technically. So... Um, but I loved their relationship in the first book before that before they got separated and Kalik went on that journey to find him and then they end up separating again because Kalik felt drawn to these bears but Takik didn't like them and thought that they should be with white bears or just be together the two of them but Kalik's new friends were important to her um and then there's um the Weasleys from Harry Potter, uh, cause they're the Weasleys, especially Fred and George, cause they're Fred and George. Uh, um, I don't know what else to say about them because the Weasleys are amazing. Uh, I have Maya and June on, uh, Evagies. Their relationship was a bit complicated at times considering what was going on, but in the end they were willing to die for each other and... They were, well, they're twins. They were really close, and they loved each other dearly. Um, uh, so I have Sophie and Josh. I had started rereading that book sometime last year, but I never continued. I'm going to continue rereading it event sometime this year, hopefully. We'll see. Um, I think I got to the middle of the third book. Um, but they're twins as well, and their parents moved a lot, so they... Um, Amu, so they, you know, they didn't keep friends very long or anything, so they just had each other, and they were really, uh, close, um, but then, um, Josh works at a bookstore for a summer job, and his, the owner of the bookstore is Nicholas and Perinelle, and then Sophie works at the coffee house across from the bookstore, and, um, that's, Perinelle goes there a lot, so they got close to the two of them, um, and then at the very beginning, you know, people attack them. And I and I, there's this one scene I just love that showed the, I mean, they're always worried about each other. They get separated sometimes and they're always, their first thought is, 
what's happening with my sister, brother, are they okay, are they alive, and it's just, their connection's just so genuine, and they love each other dearly, so, um, I remember the, one scene that comes to mind is when the fight first happens and something was going on in the bookstore and Sophie and Perinelle are at the coffee house and Sophie freaks out. She was like, and Perinelle tries to tell her not to go, that she'll make sure. She was like, she was like, no, my brother's there. I'm going to make sure he's okay. And she ran to the bookstore and it's such a sweet moment. Uh, cause you can see how much she cares about her brother. And there's been moments where you can see how much he cared about her too. Uh, where they thought the other one was going to die. I remember when, because they had to activate their powers because they found out they were chosen, the chosen ones, and their twin bond was why they were chosen. Um, and uh, Sophie ends up activating her powers first because they end up getting attacked, so Josh can't activate his powers till later on. And, um, but uh, they had to cut it short, so Sophie kind of ended up going unconscious, unconscious and then uh, Josh gets very protective of her. He gets mad at Nicholas, blaming him for why their his sister was unconscious, and he won't let her t him touch her, and he insists insisting on staying with his sister, carrying her as they try to flee, and his initial thought was to protect her no matter what, and it's just such a sweet moment. I love their relationship. They must be, they have to be, like, my favorite uh, sibling relationship of all time. Even, even more than the Weasleys, I think, which is saying a lot. Uh, but, of course, that entire series was about their uh, sibling relationship, so we got to see a lot more of it than the Weasleys as well, because the Weasleys were not the sole point of Harry Potter. But, so... The only sibling I have on here of books I've read for the first time last year is uh, Tamar and Tolia from Shadow and Bone. They are also twins. I have three sets of twins on here. Hmm. Hmm. Um. But yeah. Uh, Tamar and Tolia, I like their relationship. We don't get to see it that much because... But most time we do, when we do see them, they are together, I think. Um, Tamara's the girl, Tolia's the boy, and they end up guarding Alina and protecting her and becoming two of her most trusted people in the in her cloak. They become two people in her inner circle, along with Mel and Nikolai, even though she had issues with him here and there, whether she could trust him. But uh yeah, they were definitely in her inner circle, and I liked their characters, and I wish we got to see more of them, and especially their sibling relationship. But I did like what we got of them and um, their relationship, so um, I can't wait to see them on season two of Shadow and Bone. Um, yeah, so uh, that was Best Siblings. So now we are going to do Best Couples. So out of my rereads these are my favorite couples um some of these aren't from my uh some of these books i haven't mentioned yet uh today because even though i love the books i wouldn't consider them my all-time favorites but the couples i absolutely love um so on here i have Lizzie and Daring from um, Ever After High. They are just so cute. They don't necessarily, it doesn't really show them get together, but, and we don't get that many scenes with them since it was mostly about, since uh, it was mostly about the Wonderlandians and Cedar, and they were trying to save the school, and um, only the Wonderlandians understood anything that was going on because Wonderland had kind of come to them and no one understood what was going on, and people started like, Raven got turned into a Raven, Apple got turned into an Apple. So yeah. Um, but the few scenes we got to see of them was just so cute, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I also feel like they would be so good together for each other in the book and in the series, because, uh, the TV show, because Darren can be kind of self-involved, and, um, I think Lizzie could kind of bring him down from his high horse, and then Lizzie thinks she has to be just like her mother, even though she does want to be Queen of Wonderland, she wants to be nicer and gentler, and she doesn't want to try to chop off Alistair's head, because Alistair's one of her best friends. So, 
Um, I think Darian could help her realize that she doesn't have to be evil if she doesn't want to. And kind of, she does do a lot of the screaming like her mother. So I think he could kind of calm her down and sh sh help her bring help bring out her sweeter side. I just wish we got to see more of them in the show and in the book. <laughs> so there's, um, I keep getting Discord notifications. Okay, don't laugh. Um, from Isle of the Lost, uh, so, for, I don't know if you guys have seen, seen Descendants, but it's a Disney movie, there's three movies, and then there's four books, so, but the books go in between the movies, like, first is the first Isle of the Lost book, then it's the Descendants one, then it's Return to Isle of the Lost, Rise of the Isle of the Lost, Descendants two, then Escape from Isle of the Lost, and then Descendants three, okay, that's the order, so, um, my favorite couples in the books are the, my favorite couples in the movies, which are Mel and Ben, Evie and Doug, Carlos and Jane, Jay and Lonnie. Jay and Lonnie never become an official couple, which I'm still mad about because I shipped them. Because I don't see Jay with an ordinary or, or a dog girl, but Lonnie isn't an ordinary or a dog girl. She's a lot like her mother, Mulan. So, and so I don't see him ending up with someone like Audrey, but I do see him with Lonnie, and I think it'll be awesome. I still love that one scene. In Descendants 2 where he uh, he s makes this whole comment about how he how he's from the Isle and even though Ordon's a better in a lot of ways the one thing that the Isle is better at is the fact that if you're good they want you whether you're a girl boy Ordon kind of Ordon's a bit sexist to be honest they wouldn't let Lonnie join because she wasn't a man and but Jay, he's from the island, and the Isle doesn't care. They don't care if you're a girl or a boy. They just care that you're good at what you're doing. And I loved his little speech. And he was like, and because Chad kept saying she can't join the uh, um, uh, team because it's the rules say a captain and eight men. And so he turns them around with the loophole and makes her the captain because they never because the woman never said the captain had to be a man so he turned down his chance at being captain for Lottie and it was just such a sweet moment and I love that scene and I think they should have been a couple um <clears throat> I also have um Allison and Max from Hocus Pocus and the all new sequel because the beginning is actually the uh, Hocus Pocus part, but like more than half of it is the sequel part. And then I also have Poppy and Al as a. I almost said Allison. What the heck? Allison is her mother. I'm done. Poppy and Isabella. That's her name. Um, but they're so cute together. Um, Poppy ends up, you know, bringing the witches back like her dad because. She's an idiot like her dad, but um, they do it in a different way, and the stakes are higher than ever because if they don't put the witches back to hell, she could lose her parents and aunts forever. So her, her best friend Travis, her crush Isabella, and um, her frenemy Katie, who is actually the um, daughter of the, I can never remember the guy's name the two bullies the the one with like no hair i think they called ice why i don't know what is his real name i don't know but the guy with long blonde hair his daughter that's who katie is so um the four of them have to work, try to work together to uh bring take the witches back and save poppy's family binks is in it but he's a ghost and you get to see more of emily because in because uh, in the original hocus pocus you only got to see emily at the end and then um, you also get to meet Elizabeth, who was the fourth Sanderson sister that no one knew about because she wasn't evil. She was a good witch. But yeah, I love Poppy and Isabella, and I love the really sweet scene because Poppy, because Isabella was Poppy's crush, and um, Isabella had been hanging around with her and Travis all year, and Poppy thought that was really weird because it's like, uh, she's like so beautiful and she's so popular and nice to everyone. Why is she hanging out with us all of a sudden? And Travis is hilarious. He totally has that whole uh, best guy friend teasing his best girlfriend thing going down. So yeah. But he 
Yeah, uh, but uh, I really like the ending when um, Isabella explains why she's been hanging out with her because he, she wanted to spend more time with her. It's just such a sweet scene. Um, I lost where I am at. Okay, per Paranel and Nicholas on um, uh, The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. I really like their relationship and I feel like it's very underrated. Probably because that series is so underrated. Um, I mean, it's not one of my favorite series of all time. That's why it wasn't on my last video I just made. Because it's not one of my favorite series. But it is still really good. I think I rated all or most of the books four stars. Because they were good. They just weren't five star reads. But I rate most things four, four or five stars. Because, yeah. Because um, I stay in my area of what I like. So I end up rating most of what I read four or five stars. Every so often or three. But, yeah. But they're just so cute. And one thing I love about the relationship is that Paranel is more powerful than Nicholas. And everyone knows it. Nicholas knows it. He has said several times throughout the series that Paranel is more powerful than him. And a lot of guys would get all, you know, hurt ego kind of situation going on there. Not him. Okay? He will say that Paranel is... Um, more powerful of it, uh, than him and he would never have a note of jealousy or hurt ego in his voice or anything he would be just like yeah Paranel's more powerful than me so what and I love that I love him and I love their relationship it's just so sweet um so from the my from one of my monster high series is I have Lala and Claude Lala's Draculaura she had to come up with a different name while hanging out with Normies because Draculaura is a bit of an eye-opener to the fact that she's not human. Um, Cleo and Deuce, and then Melody and Jackson. Um, Lala and Claude and Cleo and Deuce were couples in um, the uh, movies. They, they were two of the main couples. Um, Melody is a character that the author created. So... Um, uh, and she... Pair, pair, and the author paired uh, Melody with Jackson, and I really liked their relationship, but they ruined it and Melody's character in the fourth book. The fourth book is my favorite, mostly because it's about Draculaura, and she's my favorite Monster High character, for those of you that did not know. Um, but they ruined Melody's character and Melody and Jackson because Melody had always been not the prettiest, and but then after she finds out that she's actually a monster that she has powers and she ends up she i don't remember what happened but somehow she became more beautiful um she started hanging out with this band and because she loves to sing so she wanted to join this band and go to these nightclubs and started behaving more like her older sister who she who she had issues with because she always acted better than everyone else but she started doing that once she started looking better and she started she started hanging out with this one guy and kind of um not paying attention to Jackson anymore because now she's beautiful and that's all that matters and it really got on my nerves because the whole point of Melody's character was the fact that she that she wasn't like that that she was the opposite of her sister that she didn't care about looks that she liked the fact that Jackson was quirky and that she didn't care about dating the hot guy it just it bugs me but up until the fourth and they even break up at one point because Melody ends up technically cheating on Jackson she kissed another guy um but then she realizes her mistake because she realized because she, when she kissed him she didn't feel anything but not like she does every time she kisses Jackson so she ends up trying to get Jackson back, and they, I, they leave you off to believe that they get back together, but they never say it for sure, for sure. Um, but it just it just got on my nerves. But I love their relationship up until the final book, because they totally ruined Melody's character and her relationship with Jackson. But, um, yeah, moving on. I have uh, Rebecca and Sai from Most High Ghoul Friends, because um, they never technically become an official couple but it was obvious of the feelings i mean so they mentioned size crush a couple times because size roommate who's on a few times here and there has made a note of his 
a crush and every time he's around Rebecca he blushes and stuff. But Cy really cares about Rebecca. She's always making sure she's okay and protecting her. Um and uh and I don't I and you can tell Rebecca likes him. The only thing is Rebecca doesn't realize that she has feelings for him. She thinks he's just a great friend. But every so often she'll gush over Cy and talk about how amazing he is. She likes him more than just a friend. She just doesn't realize it yet. And if they made that final book, I think they could finally become an official couple. So when are you going to make that book, people? Just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, what's next? Da, 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 da. I also have um, Allie and Mikey from the Skin Jacket Trilogy because they are so cute together. I love him. I love them. Um, Enemies to Lovers is always cute. And at one point, when they started coming to each other, when they started, you know, not hating each other as much, Allie makes a comment because she's Allie. She makes a comment about how she's like, this isn't going to turn out to be a beat in the beast moment, okay? But it kind of did in the end because she couldn't fight her attraction even though she tried to. Um, let see. I also have Maya and Aiden from FG's trilogy because they're really cute. Um, I like their relationship. They had one of my favorite scenes is with them besides the Aiden's love confession or the final scene you see with them at the end. Uh, um, is actually one of the first scenes. Um, Maya had to meet the sect and she and it was really hard for her and she didn't like and she was having like issues and stuff. Um, and a couple of those set guys weren't very nice. So she goes outside after the meeting. And um, she, out there she sees um, it's raining. And she sees Aiden holding an umbrella waiting for her. And she wasn't expecting him. It was just so sweet. So they walk towards each other. And he puts the umbrella over her. And it's just such a sweet moment. It's such a small moment. But it's so sweet. And it's I think that's the moment that I started really shipping them. I was like, oh my gosh. This is so cute. I want more. <laughs> um, I also have Ziri and Brink from Bewitched and Oz. Because they're really cute. Ziri. At the very beginning, Ziri had a crush on Ned. Um, but then. And always kind of thought of Brink as just his annoying little brother. Um. But then she starts spending, but then, you no, know, Brink ends up joining her and her friends to practice their magic. And then when Tabitha's kidnapped and they all have to go on this journey, Brink goes with Ziri and Vashti. And then Ziri and Brink start to spend more time together. And um, she falls for him. And I really like, and he, and I, I, I they never say so for sure because it kind of follows Ziri. But I think he always had a crush on her. But. He she never took note of him, paid attention to him. She always paid attention to Ned, but yeah. Um. I also have uh Jenny and Harry from Harry Potter and Ron and Hermione from Harry Potter because those two ships are on point and I love them and they are just amazing. And um, I know there's like talk about who Harry should have ended up with, but no, like. The thought of him with Hermione makes me want to puke. Harry belongs with Jenny. She's the only one that can understand him. And there's even a whole video on YouTube I was watching the other day about why Harry chose Jenny. Like, like the fact that she can make him laugh. The movies didn't show that part as much. But in the books, Jenny could always make Harry laugh. Um, which is so sweet. And, um, because he needs someone that can make him laugh, you know. And... She also has shares his love with Quidditch, and she's also the only person in the entire in that hair in Harry's life that actually knows what it's like to have Voldemort in your head. Which there's even this whole scene that I love where they're talking about that because Harry makes a comment about how no one understands, and then Jenny's like, and then Jenny makes a comment about the events of Chamber of Secrets, and uh, he was like, I forgot. And she was like, yeah, well, you can. And it's just such a sweet moment because I feel like a lot of readers did forget by that point about what happened with Jenny and Chamber of Secrets. The fact that she had Voldemort in her head. The fact that Voldemort 
chose her when she was just 11 years old, controlled her to do all these horrible things, and she was just an 11-year-old girl. Like, seriously. And then Ron and Hermione, they're just so cute. They didn't get along at first, but then they become great friends, and you can see their attraction growing throughout the books, and I think there was always something there. Maybe not from the very beginning, but close to the beginning, there I th at least from Chamber of Secrets, there was something there. They were just r too young and didn't realize it, but yeah. Um, I also have uh, Kalik and Yakon. I also like Lusa and Miki. They're really cute. They have this friends lovers thing, but Kalik and Yakon, we get to see a lot more of them. They're from Seekers, but they're just so cute and i know at one point yokon gets stuck in a bear trap and ends up almost losing one paw and ends up having a limp after that and um in the final book they started to drift apart and um there was this entire scene that i just loved where yokon was saying how um she kelly can be with anyone she wanted to be he's damaged now um she deserves better and then she she completely just goes off on him let me be like i i know i can be with who i want to be but i want to be with you and it's just such a sweet scene and i ship them a lot so now on to the ships of the books that um were new to me last year um shadow and bone i i love Tamar and Nadia, they were really cute together. I wish we got to see more of them. We didn't get to see that much of them. Um, I think we mostly saw them in the third book. And then David and Jenya were really cute. David's actually my favorite Shadow and Bone character, for those of you that did not know. But um, I love David and Jenya. They were really cute. I, my favorite scene with them is definitely the scene where... Uh, um, it's the scene where uh, Jenny, after Jenny spoke to the king about, you know, the fact that she technically was trying to kill him with poison. Um, and uh, she, she made the whole rev revelation about how he did things with her, you know, things that she didn't have the right to say no to. And... Uh, David, and then Jenny's like, D Jenny doesn't think David cares about her because he never acted like he did much before, though, um, he just, it wasn't easy for him, but, um, he makes a comment about how, I, I just love how he says it, because he's like, uh, I'm good with, I can't remember what he said about it, he's like, I'm good with this, I'm good with that, she was like, what does this have to do with it, and he was like, I'm not good with expressing my feelings, but, um, and he makes a comment about how she looks perfect to him, despite the fact that, you know, she's all scarred now from the Darkling, and it's just such a sweet scene. And then Alina and Mel, I love their relationship. I know a lot of people, I, I think that's, like, on a fence, because, like, I think it's, like, a, you either hate Mel or love him kind of person. And in the first book, I wasn't the biggest fan of him, mostly because we didn't get to see him much, that's one change I loved in the Shadow and Bone thing that we got to see more of Mel we got to see more of how much she cares about her um in the beginning but uh he, he but we didn't get to see him that much in the uh book until uh near the end a little bit in the beginning and then near the end um but I do love Mel and I do love their relationship and I feel like it was just hard for him because he felt like they were in two different paths now and he thought he was losing her so he pushed away but he does love her and I do love their relationship and then on to Six of Crows because I love Six of Crows so Nina and Matthias were really cute and I really enjoyed them and I loved love seeing their relationship especially since they kind of got together at the end of the first book and then they were together throughout the second book when the other two couples took until the end of the second book to get together so we got to see more of them but the other two couples is who i are i love more and edge and cast were just amazing they were on point they were just so sweet and they so many scenes. I I loved when the Edge got her trying to save everyone when they were first trying to leave Ketterdam and go to the ice court. 
and uh sh- and then uh Kaz was like was trying to save her. She she was like, Stay with me, stay with me and then uh he was a mess when he she was when they were trying to save her life on the boat. He was a mess. Uh, also like the end of the first book when he wanted her to stay and at the end of the second book when he bought her his book I uh, heard his, his book <laughs> he bought her the boat and got her parents for her that was just the sweetest thing ever uh i i do wish we got to see a little bit more of that like show them actually together together but the fact that you know he w- w- went there without his gloves and held her hand and didn't pull away and i that was a big move for him so i'll take it um and then uh, Jesper and Wyland, I love them together. They are just amazing, and I got so happy when they kissed, and then it turned out it was Kui, and I got so mad, but I loved him trying to explain it to Wyland, and then I love when they kiss for real, and it's just so sweet, and I love every time something, like, happens to Wyland, when Cass lies to Wyland, or when his father's mean to Wyland, um, he always gets so defensive and angry because he cares so much about him. And it's just so sweet to see that. And I love how he always dis- describes Wyland. Because he's always like that. He's He always describes him as a prince that forced into a pauper life. Because he was in this rich life that was kind of forced out into th- their life. And he always said, he kept saying that Wyland wasn't like them, that he was different, he was good and pure, and I just loved it, and I love, I felt a little sad when Jesper didn't think Wyland was good enough for him, but I really liked him together, uh, but yeah, so that's the best couples, now we're on to the best friendships, (laughs) where is it, there it is, so, Um, so I have, uh, Scathatch and Joan from, um, Secrets of the Immortal and Nicholas Femel. Scathatch is actually one my favorite character from there, at least one of them, and, which we'll get there to in a minute, but, uh, her, we meet Joan, we actually find out that Joan of Arc never died, and, um, William Shakespeare never died. They survived. And yeah, Scatha, and you find out that Scathatch actually saved, saved Joan before she died, and that's why she's alive. But yeah, I love their friendship. I also love the friendship between Mel, Jay, Carlos, and Evie, and I of Loss. I love the four of them and how close they are. I always got a little mad at the movies because I feel like they, Mel and Evie overshadow Carlos and Jay, which makes me sad because I love them too. And I feel like they should have had more, you know, not been overshadowed. Um, Poppy and Travis from Hooks, Books, and the All-New Sequel, because I absolutely love their friendship. They tease each other and stuff, but in the end, uh, but, um, in the end, they love each other. They're basically siblings. They are so close, best friends, and they would do anything for each other, and it's just so sweet. Um, I feel like that's a very underrated friendship, but I feel like the sequel book is just underrated in period. Like, I don't even think a lot of people know that there is a sequel. And I really hope this, the second movie follows the sequel book. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to be very disappointed. Because I love the sequel even more than the book, to be honest. Moving on. Um, Lizzie, Maddie, and Kitty from Ever After High. Uh, they're Wonderlandians. And they're the only ones that, you know, understood what was going on. And... Um, they are always kind of outcasted because they're so mad, um, but so they stick together because of it, and I just love their closeness and their friendship, and yeah. Um, I have Lala, Blue, Cleo, Claudine, and Frankie, um, they're from Monster High, and they are all really close. I wish we got to see more of Blue in the books. I think we should have gotten a fifth book, one about Blue, because we got because the first one was about Frankie, the second one was about Claudine. No, yeah, no, no, the second one was about Cleo, third one Claudine, fourth one Dracula, and I feel like we should have gotten one about Laguna because I feel like Laguna is the most underrated out of the main 
uh, monsters in the first place. Because the five of them are kind of the main monsters and kind of Ghoulia. I just feel like Lagoon is the most underrated out of all of them and she deserves more love. Um, she's she's actually in my top four. It goes Draculaura, Twyla, Abby, then Laguna. And I just feel like Laguna deserves more love. But they did kind of... Uh, I don't know. I didn't like what they did with her character in the last movie before the reboot. But anyways, off from that little rant that I got sidetracked in. Um, but I love their friendship. Um, they have this, like, friend group. And it's just so... They're so close and tight. And, yeah. There was a couple of couples I forgot to talk about. I forgot... Because I love... Sandstorm and Firestar from the first Arc of Warriors that, and Leafpool and Crowfeather from the second Arc of Warriors, cause, um, which they, they were actually kind of a forbidden lovers thing, which I loved. Um, but I haven't finished Warriors yet, so. Um, moving on, back to what we were talking about, which were friendships. Um, <clears throat> so, this Ron, Hermione, and Harry, obviously the Golden Trio had to be on here because they're the Golden Trio, and I love their friendship, and the seven books were kind of... Other than the fact that Harry's the chosen one and trying to and the wizarding war and trying to defeat Baltimore, one of the key points was the friendship between the three of them. <sighs> Rochelle, Venus, Rebecca, and Cy from Monster High Ghoul Friends, they are amazing and need to be talked about because I just love it. And I love what they did with those characters in that series. And I do feel like they Cy should have I mean in the final book the ghouls finally said that they're no longer a trio. They are a quartet, which I was so happy about. I love that scene. But I feel like that should have happened bef beforehand because Sai has been helping them since the very beginning. Like, it's been the four of them since the beginning. But I just feel like Sai got overshadowed a lot and it made me sad. Um, I also have Nick and Allie and Leaf from um Sick and Dragon Trilogy. But Leaf's only in the first book. But I did like the their friendship with him but I love Allie and Nick's friendship and I love they were they, we didn't get any scenes with them in the second book because they were on different paths and they were trying to find each other near the end but they just barely missed each other and then in the third book I think it took a good halfway in the book for them to finally get reunited and then I love this one scene between them in the near the end uh uh, yeah, it was at the end. This one scene before they went on their separate ways again. It was really sweet. And we need to talk about it more. I liked... Um, Maya and Lake's... Um, friendship in uh, FG's trilogy. We didn't get to see it much. And I... I'm really sad about that. Because I feel like Lake was the only one that was really nice to Maya. And she's... And I feel like the two of them did start to get close, but it didn't really showcase it that much, especially with everything that was going on. And then in the third book, I think they barely, barely saw, showed them at all, together at all, or because a lot was going on in the third book after the events of the second book. But yeah, um, I just feel like Lake was overshadowed. Period. I also have. Kalik, Udrak, Tokolo, and Lusa from Seekers because I love them and yeah. Um, I love their friendship, uh, which the entire book was about their friendship and I just love how it was about their friendship and how they were willing to die for each other and defend one another and how they're not spe technically supposed to be friends because they're different species. Well, for the most part, Tokolo and Udrak are both uh, brown bears, but Kalik's a white bear and uh, Lusa's a black bear. And I just love how everyone would look at them weird when they would hang out, but they didn't care. I mean, they cared at first because they didn't understand what was going on, why everyone hated it. But then they realized that their friendship is stronger than anything. And it's their friendships what kept them alive all, these, all this time. So, yeah. And then on to the friendships that I was introduced to uh, this year or last year. The Guardians from the Guardian series. I love their friendship and it's this is about the Rise of the Guardians movie, but we get to see how the Guardians all met and became Guardians. Okay, my laptop's gonna die and I left my charger in my library. Okay. Alyssa, mm -hmm. will you give me my charger? Because you love me. Yeah, I'm yeah. tired, so I think I'm gonna fall asleep. Alright, thanks. Um it's on my desk. I kind of figured. 
figured. Thank, thank you. Um, luckily, my laptop has great battery life, so I'll be good another minute or so. So, anyways, back to what we're talking about. Um, uh, what were we talking about? Okay, the Guardians. Uh, we got to see how close they were and how they got f formed together. And my, and I absolutely love. Actually, one of my my one of my favorite parts wasn't even the Guardians' friendship, but Catherine. Thank you, Catherine oh. and um, Nightlight's friendship because they were really close. And Nightlight doesn't get close to many people, but he loves her. And then he starts getting these dreams that are about her, and he gets worried about her. And then whenever she's kidnapped, he is a mess because all he cared about was finding her and saving her. And I just I loved their friendship. Um. See where am I? Um, Alina and uh, Jenya from Shadow and Bone. I love their friendship. Yeah, she kind of did betray them, but then she went back and started helping them again. But at the same time, Jenya didn't really have much of a choice. At least she, well, she didn't feel like she had much of a choice. She was supposed to follow the Darkling, and she seen what the Darkling can do, and she was terrified what could happen to her. But she does end up helping um, uh, um, Alina and Mel escape, which is how she ended up getting her. Uh, scars on her face which so yeah um then there's Astra and Lugo from Daughter's Ransom I absolutely love their friendship there's no r romance in here and I just love the friendship between Astra and Lugo they actually hated each other when um they met before the book but they did not like each other I wouldn't say hate but they got annoyed with each other easily and they did they, they, they didn't really like each other much but um but, you going to bed? Mm-hmm. Good night. Bye. This video will be done soon. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, when Astra is expelled, or expelled is not the right word, uh, exiled from her kingdom, she ends up going to Luko's kingdom and starts trying to find evidence of Tyron's, proves that Tyron is alive. And the two of them end up getting close. And then when um, Luko's father is murdered, they uh, end up meeting up again because they did get separated for a few chapters. I don't think it was very long. But um, Astra ends up, everyone is quick to blame Luko, thinking Luko did it because of the abuse Luko's father gives him. I hate his father. Um, but uh, Astra is quick to defend, her and defend him and stuff. And then I love the scene with... Astra is kidnapped near the end, and Lugo go, Lugo gets mad, and everyone tries to stop him from going after her. They were like, "It's an army. You can know there's no way you can uh, save her." He was like, "I have to try," and it's just such a sweet moment because you can see how much he cares by her, that like, cares about her by the end, and it's just such, it's just so sweet. And then last, the crows. Obviously, I love their friendship with each other, and um. I mean, it doesn't start out as that, as an easy alliance. I mean, Matthias doesn't like any of them. What, what my, what a uh, scene I absolutely love was when Kaz was like, "What was, what's the quizzy, la, 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 la. okay, what's the quickest way to steal a man's wallet?" And then Jasper's like, "Guns to the head," and then she's like, "Uh, uh, knife to the throat," and uh. Nana's like poison, and Batarius looks at all of them. He's like, "You're all horrible." That's he had me cracking up. But I absolutely loved their relationship. I mean, <clears throat> when Six Crows started, um, Kaz, Inej, and Jesper have already been working together for a little while now, and then they already had met Nina, or at least Kaz had. I don't know the other two. I can't remember the other two had met her, but because. She made a comment about her asking Kaz to break out Matthias out of prison several times, and he always said no. But um, uh, they end up needing uh, Nina and Matthias' skills for the impossible heist they have to do, so they end up tra breaking Matthias out of prison, and then <clears throat> and then they needed Wyland um, because Wyland was Van Eck's son, and so the, they formed an uneasy alliance. Um, but they became really close friends and actually cared about each other by the end. And I really liked Inej and uh, Nina's friendship at the end, considering they're the only girls, and it was just really sweet. So yeah, so that's it for the friendships. So now on to the best characters of 2021. 
this video is getting long too, I'm going to try to sort these up and not explain as much, just say my favorite characters. So, um, Mel J, Carlos and Evie from Isle of Lost, Lizzie Maddie Kitty from Ever After High, um, Poppy, Travis, Isabella, and Binks from Hooks Focus in the All New Sequel because I love all, I loved all of them. <laughs> uh, Scathatch, Paranel, and Joan from, uh, uh Secrets of the Immortal Nooks from Allison. Scathatch is my all-time favorite character from there, but I also really loved Paranel, and I like Joan a lot, too. Um, and then, let's see, da -da -da. Lala and Blue from, um, Monster High. Lala is Dracula, and Blue is Laguna, but... I love them. I mean, they are two that's in my top, top four favorite Monster High characters anyway, so of course they'd be my favorite on the books. Um, my second and third favorite characters weren't in the books, which is sad. But, um, Rebecca and Sai from Monster High Ghoul Friends because I, or Rochelle, I said Rebecca, I meant Rochelle. They both start with R. Rochelle and Sai. Rebecca I love too, and I love Phoenix too. But Rochelle and Sai are my favorites. Sai is just a cinnamon roll, and Rochelle is just, I love her. Um, and then, um, Harry Potter is Jenny and Ron. I love Neville and Luna as well. I also love Hermione, and Lupin is my favorite professor. I love Hagrid, and I love McGonagall. I love Fred and George, and I love a lot of characters. But Jenny and Ron are my all time favorites. I also feel like they are too are more underrated than they should be, but I absolutely love them. Um, and Bewitch and Oz, it's uh, Ziri and Brink. I love both characters. Brink is such a sweetheart. He's a cinnamon roll. And then Ziri is just so passionate and determined and fierce and headstrong. And I just, I loved her. I loved reading her, for, reading for, from her point of view. Um... And then from Warriors, it was Sandstorm and Leafpool um, from what I've read so far. Then from Skinjacker Trilogy, it's Nick and Mikey. I really, Nick is my favorite character of all time from that series, and I really enjoyed Mikey as well. Um, he had a bit of a temper, but oh well. Uh, he, I just loved him. Um, and then from FG's trilogy, it's Lake, aka Victoria, and then Maya and Aiden. I love all three characters. Lake is just a cinnamon roll, and Aiden is, I just, I love him as well. And Maya is, well, she's the heroine, and she was a good heroine to read about. There was one couple I forgot to mention while I was there, and that's, uh, Dorothea and Kato from, uh, Skin, uh, I almost said Skin Jagger trilogy. Stormmakers. I didn't. I, I haven't really talked about Stormmakers because it's not my all-time favorite, but I do enjoy that trilogy, and I loved the relationship between Dorothea and Kato. Um, Kato is my favorite character from that trilogy. But um, let's see. And then we're on Kalik, Yudrak, Tokolo, and Lusa because I love all four characters. Kalik's my favorite, and Yudrak second, but Tokolo and Lusa are close after that because I do love them as well and I just love all four characters and I love reading about all four characters um and then on to the characters that of uh, books I just read Sandy obviously because I love Sandy he was always my favorite in the Rise of the Guardians movie and it was and I wasn't surprised when he became my favorite of the uh books and I wasn't surprised at all that this was my favorite book because I kind of figured it would be, and it was. <laughs> then um, Maeve from Shadow Realm Chronicles, she's my favorite character from it. Uh, I loved Maeve, Maeve's character, and I hope we didn't get to see her at all in Justin, and we only got to see her very little in Matthew. So the next one, I think she said was about Mariel. I might be pronouncing that wrong name wrong. So, I hope we get to see her more in that one, because I did love Maeve's character. Um, in um, Shadow and Bone, it's David's my all-time favorite character, because I love him. He's a cinnamon roll, and he's awkward and sweet, and I love him. Alina, Mel, and Jinya. I love all three of those characters as well, but David will always own my heart. And then Astra Luko... 
and uh, Bei from Adonis Ransom as just my favorite with Luko, Luko as a close second, and then Bei from the third, us uh, third, second book. She was one of the main characters in the second book, and I absolutely loved her. She was so such a sweetheart, and she deserved more love <laughs> than she got. Um, and then Six of Crows. All Six of the Crows. Inez, Jesper, Wyland, Cass, Nina, and Matthias, because I have a problem, and I'm obsessed with all the crows. They're all amazing. Inez and Jesper are obviously my favorites, and it's kind of, and it's in my favorites, or the in the way I read it. Inez, Jesper, Wyland, Cass, Nina, Matthias. I still love Nina, Matthias, but I do love the other four a bit more. No offense, sorry, but I do still love them. I love all the crows, because uh, I'm obsessed with the crows. So that's all for this video. Please like and subscribe and comment your favorite um, characters, couples, friendships, and uh, siblings. And tell me if you've read any of these, if you like any of these that I named off. And I will talk to you guys again soon.